Lemmy's World of Glasgow. Xander. I went up to that Glasgow Tower. You know, the one next to the Science Centre? The only building in the world that can rotate 360 degrees for the grown up. Offers spectacular views of Glasgow, it says. What interested me, though, is that quite a lot of people are getting stuck up there in the lifts. Stuck up there for hours. So I thought, that could be interesting. So I headed there, got my ticket, went up to it. The place was dead. There was a guy outside. I says, is this it? He says, that's you, you can go up right now. I says, is there anybody up there just now? He says, no, there's nobody up there, son. I says, are you going up? He says, no, I don't go up. I says, so this is it, I'll be going in here myself and that's it. He says, aye, that's a good thing though, isn't it? I says, aye, it's a good thing. So I went in, I paid the money, it was too late to back out. I went up the lift, I got to the top, looked to it and it was shite. You could get the same view for a million and one places in Glasgow. So there I was, looking out to the south side of Glasgow. And I could just see for miles. I could see all the way down to the Kenny Heath Flats. The Kenny Heath Flats, next to Cairn Wadrick, next to Arden and Darnley. And it reminded me of where it all started. Because I'm a Cairn Wadrick boy, born and raised. The first experiences, the experimentation with the other boys, the underage drinking, the inhibitions done, the secret kisses, the things that go bump in the night. I started getting a wee bit turned on. A wee semi was just starting to appear and I just thought, right, I looked around. I've got this place to myself. I'm bored. No cameras. Fuck it. I go to cock out and I started having a wee word with myself. But just as I was getting started, the tower starts revolving around. Starting to revolve around in a clockwise direction. So I was starting to head for the south to face the west. And as the tower started turning to the west, so did my thoughts. Because it was when I was a student, hanging about the West End, or the haunts, your Byers Road, your Great Western Road, that I was starting to find mere like-minded people, gay people, just like me, gay men, finding each other, sharing stories, the good times, the bad times. It was good back then, I had a lot of fun. It was also when I came out. But as the tower kept turning for the west to face the city centre on the north, so did my thoughts. Because there came a point where I wanted to turn away for the poofy west end. I didn't like mixing with gays. I didn't feel attracted to other gay men. And it was when I was up the north, I started having chance encounters with some of the businessmen who had the hussies up in the Mogai and Bell's Den, the right posh folk, the grey-haired businessmen with their wives and ex-wives and twitty wains, picking me up as a boy. I found myself walking down University Avenue one night, you know where all the rent boys are, and I got mistaken for one myself for a businessman, a guy who I later found out once I got chatting to him. He had a wife and wains, but this this is his wee thing in his sides. And the next half hour I spent with him in that motor opened my eyes to the pleasures of a sexual encounter with a straight man. There's a danger and excitement. You're special to them. You're new to them and you're fresh to them. They put the effort in. I also got reminded of the Red Road Court flats up in the north. I was working up there helping asylum seekers. And after them you get a strange mix and they're disgust for gaydom, but also how they're all into it. Because of that, they've got mere venom in them, mere passion. To them, you're a guilty pleasure, and I know it's no one they're going to get very often. So see, when they get it, they go for it in a seriously big way. The tower started turning towards the east, the rugged, rough, Angry East, your Brigton, your Duke Street, your Deniston, your Port Keith, your Barras. And it reminded me of the time I went into a Celtic pub after Celtic had just got humped for Rangers, with a Rangers top in my pocket, hidden away. I went into the toilet, into the cubicle, and I changed into this Rangers top. 
all deliberate. I waited until I heard a lone voice in the toilet. Some drunk guy rough saying, Orange bastards fuck the queen. And I unlocked the door and let him see me in my full glory. Wearing nothing but a pair of blue Adidas and a ranger's top. And my ass propped high in the air. I just turned around, I looked at him right in the eye. And I said, fuck the queen. To cut a long story short, I was shagged black and blue. Black and blue. Just how I like it. Nay poofy shite at the end of it. Nay, will I see you again? I like you. I love you. None of that fucking rubbish. Rough and ready sex. Nay questions asked. Without even thinking about it, I'd picked up the pace to a fury wank. Really, Jack Cameron. Ben Erla, a big issue vendor. Pounding away at myself. And as I got to the tickle a bit, there we were, turning back down towards the south side. I got to the tickle a bit, whipped the trainer off, spunked in it, put it back on to keep the place tidy, and there I was left by a glorious view of the Kenny Heed Flats, with your Can Wadrick, Arden and Darnley right next to it. Back to where it all began. So I never got a shag, but, ugh, a wee trip down memory lane. <laughs>